Torchlight Infinite is a free-to-play cross-platform uh, ARPG uh, that released in October 2022. Uh, I covered this game during the closed beta and was quite impressed by the gameplay in that abilities had very low to no cooldowns, it was super fast-paced, and every level up felt impactful. That seems like Recently, Diablo. Torchlight Infinite has just like launched its Season 2, Diablo. and recent reviews for the game on Steam have gone from mixed to very positive, following numerous positive changes. So okay. in this video, we're gonna check out the game in 2023, get all the way to level 80 as a free to play player, see what awaits us at endgame and experiment with some crazy berserker builds. Okay. This video is sponsored by Torchlight like Infinite. So if you like what I'm you really see, then click the like link the cartoon, in the description below to download the game. Like high for free. detail cartoon. Torchlight graphics. Infinite in graphics. 2023, five different free to play heroes to start out with an additional two heroes that can be purchased in game with the newest one being Katai Erika. The big berserker guy, this is who I'm I'm gonna pick. Yeah, I played him in the beta and he was incredibly fun. The lazy peon, let's go. First flame brought mankind into its most glorious era. Did it really? It's nice to know. Skip. We don't care about no story, we care about big damage. I think right. I said this when I first ever covered this game, but I love it when ARPGs give you a little taste of endgame. I really like all the numbers. I will say that immediately. All the numbers on the screen are just like really great. I love big numbers. Combat speed and end game damage. Just when you first start your character. Helps you decide yeah, whether true. or not you made the uh, correct choice with your character or not. I'm pretty sure the Berserker is absolutely nutty at end game. Our future girlfriend descends <laughs> from the sky to lift us out of this shit place we're stuck in she is almost the size of my character's hand and now our damage resets back to hitting nines and tens if i remember correctly uh, this leap attack thing was the most fun ab but that's cool though because then you're going to be able to see your character progression through numbers i think a lot of people actually really enjoy being able to see character progression through their numbers ability in the game because you can just spam it over and over when i played this game during the beta i thought this leap attack ability was so fun because you can just spam it but i thought it was a bug and you wasn't supposed to do that but no <laughs> it isn't a bug abilities in torchlight infinite don't have stupidly long cooldowns you can just spam skills which i really like about the game Big well so when he leaps if you guys don't notice he actually builds up a rage meter it looks like so it looks like the leap does small damage but like gets him in the situations damage. Level four, level six, seven. It's now finished the tutorial phase and other players have started zoning in at the quest hub. Eight, and it's okay. Z, GG, level so nine, level ten. Leveling doesn't seem oh, too bad though. Forget my inventory is full, get rid of it all. Next boss, not die please. The I'm gonna get good King. at the game now, I promise. Don't make promises you can't keep. Okay. This kind of reminds me if they made like Albion Online more action packed. That's kind of what it seems like. We're getting good. I had to speak too soon, didn't I? Every time. The thing that intrigued me the most the last time I played this game was the build possibilities. You've got all of these different mods that you can put on each ability. You've got many different talent trees, and very shortly into the game, your character starts to feel kind of crazy. Plus some fast attack speed now. Very okay. quickly becoming more and more powerful. 13. Every level up feels pretty impactful because you instantly get these things in the top right telling you about all of the things you can upgrade. This seems new. I don't remember That's selecting good. hero traits during the beta. Once again, this adds more customization for how you can build your character. 14. More That's upgrades. pretty cool. Yeah. Ding, ding, dong. Every talent that I get to spend, massively impactful. Bunch of stuff to claim. Once again, fantastic audio-visual feedback from the UI. Feels good to click on stuff. From here, it shouldn't be too long until I've caught- Yeah, this really gives me, like, the Dungeon Defenders vibe. Like, the brand new Dungeon Defenders Awaken. Like, that's the vibe it kind of gives me when all the- with, like, all the stuff you're getting and all, like, the random stuff you're clicking on and the skills and, like, all that stuff. That's really what it feels like. At least that's kind of what it seems like. Up to where Not I was exactly, like it's how, a tower defense game, but I mean, like, with but graphics. For this video, and we're gonna get all the way to end game. Level 15, 16. Kind of level up super quick when you get to this second area. I've got one of these summon things, so let's see if we can summon something. Maybe it makes us more strong. Bit of gacha. We got a squirrel. 17. Oh, yeah. My little otter's actually following me around. I've only just noticed. Read all oh, of that dialogue, okay. as you can see. I can read really quickly. Game is very aesthetically pleasing. Right, I think it's at this point where I ended my first impressions the last time I covered this game. So everything beyond this point should be somewhat new to me. Level 20, and that should be another big upgrade with the talents. God, I'm attacking so quickly now. 
I'm not a huge fan Feels of the good. just now that I'm level 20, everywhere. this is the most powerful spell thinking. relative to the mobs. But I guess it's so it's far. probably their the movement mob skill. The is starting to increase, which I like. So another legendary has popped up, level 24. Yeah, At this like, rate, yeah. we're gonna be level 80 in no time. 25. There's actually quite a lot of players running around in the main hub. As I'm on the Asia servers, I've got a lot of Chinese, Korea, Japanese people playing. Seeing this many people on the Asian server is actually really good. Because a big thing is that I, I've learned from like playing MMOs is a lot of people don't play on their typical server. So like a lot of people from Europe will just play on America instead. So that way they can like compile the most amount of people. At least that's what happens in Guild Wars 2 a lot of the time is people just play from like Europe or they play from Asia or wherever it is. And they just play on America instead. So that way they can just compile a bunch of people and get more people to play with. I wonder if I can get some kind of pet or convenience item that will loot for me. I'm feeling a little bit lazy to click on loot at this point. Surely something like that would exist. It's getting a little bit ridiculous now, this attack speed. Game's making me feel like a bloody speedrunner. Level 30, any big upgrades? So bad axe is badass. Twice. I really like that. And now he's split into two. Oh, he's dealing damage. Respect the damage. That's oh, the first time I've died in like an hour and a half. Bit of unexpected challenge coming in there. I just enter the room and just whack him twice. Why? He's dead. Bosses are starting to kill me again. Boy. Ugh, that was close. That's good. Are we good? That's actually really good. That means that they make it feel perfect. They, they make it where you start to feel overpowered and then all of a sudden you start getting like wombo comboed by whatever you're fighting. I think that's like the best way to do it. So that way you can really see your progression, but then you're like, oh shit, I got to progress more. He's supposed to be dead. He's a mute. Get inside the shield. Your current resistance is too low. Increase resistance to 75% to increase chance of survival. Jesus. I was doing just fine. I just ignored the mechanic. Get inside the shield, <laughs> right? There it is. Mechanics. And he's removed his legs. That's Somehow good. that's made him more powerful. I feel like I'd be more powerful with my legs. I, I don't know. Never mind. <laughs> he is more powerful without his legs. Maybe going full glass cannon is starting to bite me in the ass. Nah. Respect the mechanics. This fight is actually quite impressive. Hey, oh. It looks oh, like they just made it where you actually have to like dodge Editing and stuff like all that, of these so. deaths. Hayden, don't make me look too bad at the game, please. <laughs> I'm actually really good at this game. What I'm trying to do is lower my skill level to the average player so I can review it more effectively. Jesus. Like that. Like the average person, they'd this get a little bit like confused. This looks like a lot of fun, though. <laughs> okay, we killed him. Completely legitimately. I hope people don't mistake me for being a game journalist because that's how I feel with how I'm pl playing today back on the airship and apparently we're now <laughs> heading to the desert oh looks like we've run into an ambush been saved by a new waifu light wielding cat girl esmeralda nice she's gonna be a fan favorite isn't she it feels good when i crit in this game because my crits are so much higher than my normal attacks they're like five sometimes Okay, phone. Thanks for interrupting my YouTube commentary. Hello? I've been getting so much loot recently that I'm sorting through it about twice every map now. The game does have a loot fill, so I should probably Yeah, but once he gets to a certain point, he'll probably just once start Once again, had a everything. significant increase in damage. When it comes to the boss fights, I feel like I would probably play better if you couldn't instantly re-enter the boss room with the boss on the same amount of health and just finish it off. There's like no repercussions for dying at all. So whenever I fight a boss, I'm just super lazy. I'll just tank all of his attacks and just deal the most damage possible because Makes usually sense. that's the fastest way of killing. This is kind of what we do in Guild Wars 2 when we're playing like side missions, honestly. Uh, that are single player. Yeah, it, it does make a lot of sense because that's, that's what I do too. I'm like, ah, whatever, I'll just... They see everything, do as much damage as possible, then, oh, I died. Respawn, redo. Killing the boss. It doesn't matter if you die. Maybe later on there's some game modes where it does matter more, but during the actual campaign, dying doesn't matter whatsoever. Applying this loot filter has helped. It's now only dropping epics. And the vacuum cleaner has arrived. Big damage on my earlobes. I wonder if my build's gonna be viable when I get to end game, because I'm not following any build guides, I'm just clicking on what I think looks fun and looks big damage. Probably the most fun way to play these games, really. I've got another draw token, so let's draw. Give me something oh, good, big epic, money, please. big money. What a handsome creature that is. Oh. This reminds me of one of the characters from Monsters, Inc. I like that I feel comfortable just like spending a lot of time in this menu, experimenting 
and trying to figure out what's going to do the most damage because there's so many little augments and passives that you can add to your abilities to really make the most unique builds. Me playing around with my abilities cool. and augments has taken my DPS from 3.5k to 4.7k. Me just experimenting, reading, and messing around, that's how impactful the talents and augments are in this game. <laughs> I'm a lot more squishy now, though. Doesn't matter when you've got big yeah, damage, though, does it? Increase. I'm such a simple guy. In almost every ARPG, my right, approach is full blast increase. cannon, big damage. At some point, it's going to bite me in the ass. Level 40. We're probably approaching the end of chapter 3. Okay. Hey, man, what did you do now today? To I got on the game and I, uh... I'm pretty chill. I jumped. Pretty phased by me. Big anime titties popped out, of course. Love to see it. The plan is nuke her down before her mechanics start to play out, which I will inevitably fail at. <laughs> Please stay tuned for future updates. Oh, wait, am I like fully caught up to the main campaign? Nether Realm Mentor. So this is how I'm probably going to get to level 80. So for this Nether Realm thing, I just need to defeat the bosses. And in the top right, it also indicates how many bosses are on the map and how many I need to kill. So I'm one out of three at the moment. My okay. character is just feeling like an absolute god right now. So this right is basically now. like the, crazy thing is I'm only the dungeons halfway to Lost Ark. Well. Like, um, how much more crazy can the gameplay even get? More open. The final boss room. It's going to be an actual challenging boss fight or yeah, not super challenging. I'm pretty strong right now dead clean so that's the neville realm done then we click on this what's this a uh, hundred percent chance for void pirates to drop hero relics oh i get to choose some kind of void seal thing so now we need to okay. defeat waves of monsters so going through these different stages is going to give me various augments i guess killed the bosses the tentacles of oh this There's is like a, a mobile chest. game open the treasure chest and we go to like level two or something Kill yeah this looks again. like a mobile go game almost a void thing dude what, what is even going on it's not there's like no story or context really we're just talking about with, like the right tower now. system going through like endless you, like, go stages through, you I fight a bunch of stuff doing these all the way till level and then 18. it like asks, you get like an augment and then you go to the next stage level 50 that's gotta be a big upgrade somewhere See that in a lot of i'm getting so much loot now it's kind of difficult to loot everything i really want auto loot i think i can get auto loot with the battle pass for free finally okay i have got auto loot that was good timing let's see if this actually works it doesn't auto loot weapons unfortunately but it's auto looting resources so that's a few less clicks at the very least okay. and now we're on chapter five never Maybe that's invasion some of the two. so basically what i was doing all throughout chapter four is just going to repeat throughout chapter five and eventually we're going to get to level 80 so at this point i'm going to put some music on maybe watch a stream on my other monitor and blast my way to level 80. Makes sense. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Oh, level 60. So now I've completed five out of five for this nether realm, and I think I've unlocked a boss. All right, let's give it a try. A remaining attempt five. If I die more that's than five boy. times, that's it, GG. Ooh, and we've got some actual mechanics to deal with here. It's gonna involve some getting good on my part. Luckily, I have fantastic mobility, and there is a lot of stuff to dodge. Okay, this is actually pretty cool. Actually fighting a boss and having to really pay attention to the mechanics. And there it is. Okay, no phase two. New Cinder received. Bunch of super legendary stuff. And that was pretty cool. So you basically go through all of these nether realm stages. You do like five of them, then you unlock the final good, boss, good which has special too. loot. Fairly cool gameplay loop. Surely, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I think he got kind of lucky with the fact that he has like max mobility, right? See, because he's able to just... <laughs> yeah, and run away from everything. It has dropped an upgrade for me. You I spent the next day or two grinding the nether realm from level 60 to 80 in what was quite a formulaic and repetitive process. Basically fight through various stages until you've gained enough insight to fight the main boss of the area. Okay. Upon beating the boss you get a boss loot and one cinder. Collect enough cinders and you unlock more areas with different bosses and loot. Each time you beat the area boss for the first time on a new difficulty, you then unlock the next difficulty known as time mark levels. 
basically better loot and stronger mobs. Yeah, this kind of seems like a mobile game aspect to me, where you're just like, okay, you're going to go to this level, you're going to collect some items, they're going to upgrade your character a little bit, but then after they upgrade your character a little bit, you're going to have to up get this key, of it, basically. Like, that's kind of what it seems like. It's like, you have to get this key, and then this key allows you to go to the next hard area, and it's just the same thing over and over again. It's it, it's literally like one of those mobile games you put on, like, autoplay, and it would just, like, go through the levels for you, and all you have to do is select, like, the loot that you want. That's kind of what this little aspect seems like, which could kill the game. It could be something why maybe the game isn't super popular, but maybe people do enjoy it, because it is one of those games where that seems like you can just sit down and play it for hours and hours and hours on end and not probably not get bored but it probably does get tedious after a little while especially if you aren't constantly getting stuff during this process i did find it to get quite repetitive and i found it annoying that killing void pirates doesn't give you any xp even though they're more challenging than the standard mobs i was also confused by loot in this game there were many times where i'd get a full inventory of legendary and pink loot only to have zero upgrades, even though I'd still got old campaign gear equipped from 30 levels ago. 99%, come on, give me level 80 before we hit the boss. There it is. It's probably because of how we did that. It's been quite the grind. So level 80 isn't max level, it's just where you get your last hero trait. So that's why 80 was the level that I was aiming for. We're at the point where it's extremely rare that I get an upgrade from killing mobs. Oh my god, I got an upgrade. So now I've completed nine stages of the Thunder Wastes, I can now- The issue is, is uh, if you actually look at the stats, it's not that he's not getting stat upgrades, it's not he- It's that he's not getting the exact stat upgrades, right? Because the build that he's going for, it looks like he needs exact stats. So if he's not getting those exact stats, then he's not going to get them. And if there's a stat pool of like 600 different types of stats that you can have, right? Then the chances of you getting upgrades are extremely low as it is take on the boss i've already killed this boss a few times on lower difficulties but it seems as though on higher difficulties he gets more mechanics and his mechanics are more intense for a that's game cool. that's also available on mobile it's very intense like i can't imagine oh, doing on this boss okay. on mobile to be honest i think it'd be too difficult in terms of difficulty it's as challenging as any pc game that was a challenge I'm about 20 to 30 hours into playing this game at the moment. I haven't spent a penny, but I think now would be a good time to wrap up this video because to unlock the rest of the Nether Realm, it would take a lot of grinding. To unlock okay, the final boss, the Lord of Calamity, and basically beat the game, I need 35 cinders. I've currently got 19. So I'd basically it need to go through these like stages another 16 straight, times right? and beat 16 bosses, each of which drop one cinder to unlock this. Upon further research, after completing the Thunder Wastes Nether Realm quest, you actually unlock another endgame activity called Path of the Brave, which features okay. 45 stages of increasingly difficult arena combat, oh, where towers. players face swarms of monsters and combinations of yeah, difficult that's, that's bosses towers. in order to earn increasingly valuable items such as currency, exclusive support skills, memory cards, and legendary equipment. Apparently, this part of Endgame will be something you progress through even after you've defeated the current final boss of the Nether Realm called the Lord of Calamity. But to be honest, I was 25 to 30 hours deep at this point, and it was beyond the scope of this video. So after playing Torchlight Infinite for about 20 to 25 hours and getting to Endgame, my thoughts are as follows. The gameplay is responsive and lightning fast, the combat as a whole feels impactful and satisfying, okay. you're given an immense amount of freedom when it comes to creating your own build, and with every talent point you spend you can immediately feel its impact. The game has its own identity with a unique art style, the boss fights both at endgame and during the campaign are challenging, and the game can be fully enjoyed free to play for the vast majority of your time playing it. Grinding the nether realm oh, from 60 man. to 80 felt quite repetitive, more could be done at this stage of the game to add variation to the gameplay. The fact that void pirates don't give you any XP when you killed them made this entire feature of the game feel like a waste of time whilst I was grinding from 60 to 80. Whilst I appreciate that there's auto loot for resources, I wish there was auto loot for weapons Yeah, I do, I do agree with that from one. 60 to 80, the sense of progression from weapon and armor drops feels confusing. There was times where a piece of campaign gear I got 30 levels prior was better than legendary level 70 gear that I just got from a boss. Mm -hmm. It didn't really make much sense to me. 
The game did a poor job of explaining the gear, enchanting, and empowerment system once I reached endgame. These systems are very important. Oh, you're supposed to increase them? The wall if you don't understand them. Whilst I did see many that makes a little bit more sense. The hub areas, I didn't ever get the opportunity to do any multiplayer content. This wasn't something that the game pushed in any way. Overall, Torchlight Infinite is an incredibly fun game when it comes to the most important things in an ARPG, which is fun, satisfying gameplay, with the freedom to experiment with many different build possibilities. The main issue I had with the game was that it got a bit repetitive at certain times. However, I think a lot of the cons I listed are easily fixable with future updates, and I would expect the game to improve even more over the next year. But that's it for this video guys, as always let me know your thoughts on Torchlight Infinite in the comments below, and click the link in the description to download the game for free right now. Social media on screen, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, another really good video by LazyP on honestly, overall I would say that the game, just from a new player's perspective, from somebody who's never played the game or seen the game, I'd probably give it like a 6, uh, like a 6 out of 10 more than likely, uh, the, the, the game just, it, it feels like it's missing something even watching the video, uh, it, it's not just like, oh the auto loot or something like that, but it feels like it's missing something more, uh, maybe some more campaign. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. Maybe they need some more campaign. Because I think the campaign stopping at, like, what was it, 50? Uh, it, the campaign stopping at 50, basically, and then being like, all right, well, now you got to grind all the way up. Or was it 40? I don't even remember. It was either 40 or 50, and then after that, you have to just go, like, grind other stuff.